In this video, we are going to learn about the mathematical description of multi-qubit systems and we will examine entanglement and separability. To understand this lecture, you will have to be familiar with Hilbert spaces, matrices, tensor products and tensor product spaces. In quantum informatics, whenever we examine a pure composite system, we represent its state as a vector in a joint Hilbert space. Just as a reminder, the tensor product is an ordered pair of vectors. These ordered pairs form a joint vector space whose dimension is the product of the two factors. The tensor product is bilinear. The tensor product of orthonormal basis vectors forms an orthonormal basis in the joint space. Since vectors in the joint space describe composite systems, they have several characteristics that are familiar to us by now. First, each basis vector in the joint space is associated with a distinct outcome of a measurement. The difference is what this measurement means now. Instead of measuring qubits one by one, vectors of the joint space correspond to outcomes if all the qubit values are measured. Second, arbitrary qubit states that we cannot identify with 100% accuracy are linear combinations of these basis vectors. Third, the scalars of the linear combinations are the probability amplitudes. These are complex numbers with a phase and an absolute value. The outcomes of the measurements are still random and the probability of a certain outcome can be calculated as the absolute value square of the corresponding probability amplitude. From this, it also follows that since the sum of the probabilities must be 1, we must have a constraint on the probability amplitudes. In summary, this means that, with a few notable exceptions, probabilities and phases are associated with the state of every qubit in the joint system, instead of describing individual qubits. To understand this better, let's take a look at some examples. First, let's take two qubits. If they are independent, then each of these qubits can be described as a vector in a two-dimensional H-Hilbert space. The state of the combined two-qubit system, however, will be described as a vector in a four-dimensional H-tensor H-product space. The basis vectors of the joint space will be associated with distinct outcomes of a measurement if we measure the value of all qubits. For example, the state cat 0, 0 is associated with both the first and the second qubit being in state 0, cat 0, 1 means the first qubit is 0 and the second is 1, cat 1, 0 means the first is 1, and the second is 0, while cat11 means both of them are 1s. So this was our first example. Let's see a second one in which we generalize this for more than 2 qubits. Let's take system A, for example a 2 qubit system, whose state is described as a vector in an HA Hilbert space, and the second system B, like a 3 qubit system, associated with HB. The state of the combined system will be a vector in a joint space HAB, which is HA tensor HB. The dimension of these spaces is 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of qubits they consist of. Consequently, the dimension of joint space is the product of the factor's dimensions, meaning the joint space is growing very fast and the addition of every single qubit doubles the possible outcomes of a measurement and therefore the dimension. We can use the Kronecker product to represent the tensor product in case of matrices and finite dimensional vectors. Think of this Kronecker product as writing the terms of the first matrix and using them as scalars to multiply the second matrix from the left. As a side note, this only works if the terms of the matrix are indeed elements of the scalar field over which the vector space is defined. Luckily, in case of quantum mechanics, that requirement is satisfied. Applying the Kronecker product to column vectors, we get a column vector whose components are every possible combination of the first two vectors' components. As with any tensor product, the Kronecker product of the basis vectors will form a natural basis in the joint space. Note that in bracket notation we don't always write out the tensor products. Often, we just label the resulting basis vectors with a binary number instead that represents the product. Since the tensor product is a non-commutative ordered pair, there can be no confusion over which state is from which space. The first bit value is always associated with the first qubit, the second with the second qubit, 
and so on and so forth. Naturally, this is also true for linear combinations. Whenever and wherever you see a tensor product, or a cat vector labeled by a string of binary numbers, you can always assume that a, each term is from a different space describing a different system, and b, the first term is always associated with the first qubit, the second term with the second qubit, etc. Sometimes this can be reversed, and the state of the joint system can be factorized into a tensor product. For example, the vector cat00 plus cat01 plus cat10 plus cat11 multiplied by a normalization factor can be factorized. But not every state of the composite system can be factorized. In fact, if you choose the probability amplitudes randomly, then you will almost certainly end up with an entangled state. Most entangled states are not that special, but some do stand out, like the so-called Bell states, that play an important role in many applications. These Bell states are maximally entangled two qubit states, meaning that the values of the qubits are either perfectly correlated or perfectly anticorrelated. These correlations are also present in every entangled state, although usually to a lesser extent. In case of the Bell states, a measurement can have only two outcomes. The outcome is absolutely random, and each possibility has a 50% chance. Remember, the probability is the absolute value square of the scalar coefficients. This means that although the qubits behave like a flipped coin individually, together they are like a pair of magically linked twins. In some Bell states the outcome is 100% correlated, in others it's 100% anticorrelated. The Bell states also form an orthonormal set, which means that if we know that our two qubits are in one of these states, then with the right measurements, we will be able to accurately determine which one. This will be useful later on for communication protocols. So this concludes our introduction to multi-qubit systems. In this lesson, we have seen that a, the state of closed multi-qubit systems can be described as a vector in a joint Hilbert space, and basis vectors of this space correspond to outcomes of a measurement. During this measurement, the value of every qubit must be measured. And b, there are some multi-qubit states that cannot be factorized into tensor products. This means that such a system cannot be described as a mere collection of individual qubits. Instead, these qubits are fundamentally connected, and the connection manifests itself as a correlation between random outcomes of measurements. Thanks for watching, and see you at the next video.